moving on, we got personas. And now personas is a, probably the first report that's part of the advanced package that Amplitude offers, uh, typically limited to enterprise or higher volume accounts. Uh, and what also makes this report special is we can also start to see a little bit of, of the more machine learning or more advanced analysis that Amplitude is doing out of the box. So in the previous reports, you know, if you look at segmentation and funnels and so on, uh, we saw mostly typical reports where you, you have your data and you can organize it, you can show it. Uh, personas will be the first time where we're going to start doing a little, a little bit more advanced things. So to explain this report, uh, let's first, uh, we're going to create clusters or groups of users. Uh, uh, in marketing, you might think about personas or things like that. Uh, and here, though, with, you know, we'll start by taking some kind of attribute, let's say active users. If you remember, uh, you can define what an active user is, that is, what events qualify for an active user. And then this becomes available across uh, nearly all the reports in Amplitude. So we're going to start with very simple, just active users. And then we want to ask Amplitude to group them into clusters, into groups. So we have options here. Now you can see we can do up to, up to 30 clusters. But let's do four clusters. Uh, no real reason why. Four is just an easy number for us to, to look at, at the report. So now what, what Amplitude will do is that it will take all the, all the active users within this day range, right, who are active during uh, this specific, this is actually just a daily range. So let's actually make it, let's make it something like, just like that, 15 days. Now what we're just doing here is that it grabs all the users and then it, and it groups them depending on what, the, uh, what events they fired and some of their, their attributes. Uh, and what it's trying to create, is trying to create distinct clusters of users, right? So imagine you have a product and you have, uh, naturally you think about power users, maybe people use the product quite a bit, maybe lightweight users, maybe users who are brand new, and maybe users who are uh, dead, let's say, who are, who, are, who are inactive. Those can be styles of clusters, right? Ideas of how you group users. Uh, so after it's doing that, with, with the data that, that, you, that you provided. Now in this case, we're only looking at active users and then it will say, okay, here's cluster one, here's cluster two and so on. So right away we can see, uh, you know, on cluster one, we have uh, 100,000 users, which is about 28% of all the clusters. So this cluster is actually pretty even. You can see it's, you know, 28% here, 26 on this one, 26 and 18. Um, sometimes you'll, you'll get sense that the clusters aren't very distinct. So they are very similar. In that case, you need to, play around, maybe three clusters is better, maybe 10, maybe seven, where maybe we'll start to get a sense of that as you run the data. Nonetheless, in cluster one, we can see that 89% of the users in cluster one are part of the second criteria, which is actually here, right? So the first criteria is what we want to gener generate clusters form. In this case, we look at the active users. We can also look at new users, uh, maybe uh, any other kind of segment. Then how many clusters we want to try and generate. And then we want to determine some kind of action, some kind of uh, result. In this case, we're looking at retention. So here we have a uh, second week retention, third week retention. We can also have specific segments uh, or, or, or things that we want to target. Uh, second week retention in this case, the way this, this works is uh, you'd be looking at users who were active during this period because we have active here and then who were, <clears throat> who were retained or you know, who fire an active event uh, two weeks from, from that point as an example, right? So again, all, all this logic is being done for you and this is simply saying that uh, 80, 81% of the users in cluster one were also uh, in the second week retention. So they were retained in that second week after they did this active event. Right. Eventually, you know, once you generate clusters, this is something that you can eventually describe. You may say, hey, this is our, um, this is a music app. Uh, but you may say, this is all the users who, um, who pay for the subscription annually. I don't know. And then all the users pay for the subscription monthly and so on. You start to create these little groups of people and you can take them everywhere you go in Amplitude in, in a, any other reports that we'll see and then analyze the report just for those users. So this is a great way to start exploring what the potential clusters are. One thing you have to see right away is that this typically works once you have a lot of data. If you're just starting out, this will not be very helpful. You, you know, trying to cluster I don't know, a thousand users into four clusters is not gonna work very well. Then at the bottom here, uh, we get all the events that, that we have available here in, in, in this Amplitude account. And oh, scroll too fast. And then we can see, for example, for cluster one, we were selecting here, how they compare to the average, right? So the average, uh, the average user will fire, you know, 1.55 times this event here called sign up for email list. But cluster one does about three times, 3.04 exactly, actually. 
So, so when, whenever it's like a cluster, it reorganizes the events to show us which one tends to be more popular. And this is also what we start to see. Maybe, maybe we find out that one group uh, tends to skip ads more than the other cluster, right? Or maybe one group uh, really likes uh, add-in items, uh, add-in stocks as a wish list. It's a, another event we have here at some point. So this is how we start to, to look at that, uh, especially how they compare to the average, uh, the average across all the users, right? So this can give us a sense of where some of the events or actions this specific cluster is doing much more frequently than other clusters, right? Of course, we can save this as cohorts, uh, so we can start using them in messaging and a few other things. And that's really it. So this is personas. So this is, you know, this is a, an initial analysis that you can likely start setting up and analyze and then build upon. Uh, but this is uh, first, as I mentioned, a uh, part of reports where you're going to see a little bit more uh, machine learning, uh, perhaps a little bit of AI, uh, in terms of how you analyze the data. Uh, we'll see a few other reports like that as well.